All right guys, welcome back. So today I'm gonna to show you how to install a duplex receptacle. This is the tamper-proof one, um, or TR, I think it's a TR, tamper resistant. So it's got little tabs in here so little kids can't stick knives or something in there and hurt themselves. So um, someone already stripped these, but I'm gonna strip them longer. So basically these are 14 gauge wires and I can tell that because of the thickness and just because I'm familiar with it, but you can also tell um, by the color of the wire, it's white in there. Trust me on that. Um, so I'll show you guys later or at a different time how to um, how to wire these, but for now I'll just show you how to make them up. So right now it probably doesn't matter about the, about the, uh, the paint on the ends of the wire, but I'm just cutting them off because I don't know why. So, so for these I'm stripping them out extra long, like an inch almost. Uh, most people probably wouldn't do very much. Um, I mean, you could probably stick them in the back as well, um, because these are small wires, 14 gauge. You can probably stick them in the back, but I'm just going to show you how to how to uh, put them on the outside of the screws right here, right there. And then maybe down the road, I can show you how to do a half hot or other more complex things with the uh, with the plugs and stuff. So uh, basically, you just put it in your strippers at the very end and then just twist it and make it into a U shape. And the reason why I leave them so long is just so the whole the whole loop is exposed in copper because if you do it, if you have not enough i mean if you do sorry i'm really choking over my words here but basically if you don't strip enough out then half of the half of the loop is in sheathing and then when you go to screw it down on the screw then it's connecting it's making contact with the sheathing first and then it doesn't make a really good connection on the wire so basically you want it you want it touching the wire and not half of the sheathing so it's like higher on one side if that makes sense so the sheathing would be connected here like that and then it wouldn't make a good connection with the rest of the copper so basically you want all the copper touching so basically um all the copper is going to be not exposed out the back anyways so because i left it an inch long it's still not really making any exposed copper out the back sometimes it does but I don't feel like it's that big a deal unless your ground is like coming up and touching the other wires. But I mean, if it's touching the other screws anyways, it's still gonna be a problem. So just make sure your ground or um, make sure your ground isn't floating around once you shove it in the wall. Make sure it's not touching the silver screws or on the other side, if it comes up and then touches the gold screws, that would be even worse. So. Um, I'm going to get to this now. I don't even know. It's like three minutes. I haven't really done much, but basically lastly, you're going to want to clean off the ground. So sometimes these plugs are in 12 wire. Sometimes they're in 14 wire. It just depends on the job site. Um, these ones are in 14. Um, and then the main circuits like the kitchen and stuff is in 20 amps, 12 gauge wire. So that's a little bit thicker. And those you have to strip out like this. And uh, the 14s, you can kind of get away with sticking them on the back of the plug, but I think they stopped making the stab ins 12 gauge in the back. So first we're gonna start off with the ground. And if you can see this, you're gonna wanna keep it inside the little, um, this little marker right here, because if you don't, if you have it like this, it's not gonna make a good connection. And then if you have to use one of these box extensions, it's really a nightmare to try to shove it through the hole when the wire's sticking out. Like I'll show you. I'm gonna give you the whole tutorial today. So if you, let me show you. So if you have this wire on here wrong, and then you try to shove it through here, like if the wire is sticking out like this, and you try to shove it through this plastic thing, it, it catches on the edge right here, and it's just a nightmare. So for the sake of everyone or yourself, or anyone coming behind you, keep it inside this little marker and then you can kind of fold it in on itself and tighten the loop just to get a better connection. I lost my screwdriver. I guess I never had it. And you can 
Um, depending on how you want to do this, you can hit it with your drill first like this, um, but you want to make sure it's kind of tight. Um, so just make sure the top of the screw is all the way around the screw. So you can hit it with your your screw, uh, impact gun, but then you want to you want to crank it down with your flat blade because that's not the best connection. If you just go off your screw gun, it doesn't usually get it extremely tight. Um, then you're going to want to do your whites or your neutrals, and those go on the silver screws. I've been wanting to do this plug video for a while, um, so I'm glad I finally got to it. And then when you get to these ones, you're going to want to keep them in the markers too. There's these little edges right here, so you don't want to you don't want to have the wires like this because then it really doesn't get a good connection either. You just want to keep them inside their their little pockets right there, and you can kind of fold these in on themselves to close the loops. And so that's how you want it right there. And you want to make sure the loops are going to the right. So because it because the screws are turning to the right. Um, that one didn't tighten that well. but So if you had the loop the other way, I'll show you in a second, but if you have the loop the other way, uh, it backs, it backs the, the wire out. So I'm just gonna tighten these real quick. I feel like I'm talking way too much today. So, just get those really nice and tight. And so basically, I don't know why I always say that. Um, so this is the right way going to the right. When you screw it, it tightens it down. If you flip the loop around like this, and then when you go to tighten the screw, it, it backs out. It backs out the wire. So you wanna have the loop going the same direction so it tightens the wire and doesn't loosen the wire, if that makes sense. I'm not sure if I'm explaining this the best right now, but. Um, Keep them inside the loops because I'm doing a lot of plugs right now. I don't know if it was the last company that was here since we took over this job. Um, a lot of these wires aren't even tight, and they're all they're all all like overlapping. It just looks messy, and then especially when the ground wire is coming out, and I'm trying to put a box extension on mostly every one of these plugs. It's just a nightmare when that wire is catching on the edge of the box extension. So I think I already tightened these down, but I'm going to double check. I don't think I did. So once you get those all tightened down, you're just going to kind of want to fold this in like an accordion or just neatly. And then sometimes this ground wire can come up extra high and you just want to push that, make sure that's pushed down so it stays away from the silver screw so it doesn't make contact with anything that it's not supposed to. And then you can use your drill here. And just screw this down. And you just don't want to go don't want to go crazy with it, but make sure it has contact with the wall. Make sure it's snug. If it if it's the box is too far in the wall, then you're gonna to want to use one of these box extensions to be code legal. And then you'll also have to get longer screws, longer screws to go. Um, grab the box because the screws are only so short, but these are the wrong screws, just an example. Um, so another thing you wanna do, if the plug is like all cockeyed, I usually take channel locks. This one's usually, pre this one's pretty good right now, but you just kind of wiggle it at the angle you want, make sure it's just flat with the wall. And then grab your flat blade again and your level. And you're just gonna wanna level this out. Make sure you're not, make sure that loop is in the middle so it's not, uh, level in the wrong way or anything like that so just make sure it's in the center of the bubble and then just I always just like to tighten it down get it nice and secure and don't go too crazy you don't want the plug bending into the wall because that is also bad but you want to make sure it's not going to go in anywhere once you tighten it down and then you can double check its level still good Grab your plate here. Okay, that wasn't quite on camera. And then you're gonna want to put your plate on here. And these are the unbreakable plates. And so, I don't know, just try to make sure 
make it look as good as possible. Sometimes you have to tighten it down so the so the plate is tight to the wall, but then it kind of bends the, you can kind of see that it's bending in on the inside. So this top of this plug is sticking out further than the top of that plug or whatever. So it's nice when it's just the, all the same distance like that, but then the plug is kind of loose. So sometimes it's not gonna be perfect, but you're gonna want this nice and tight. Make sure your screw's going up and down if you care about that. And then put your level back on it and then level it out. So a little bit to the left and it's good. And then I usually just push on it, make sure it's, make sure it's um, not gonna fall into the wall. This one feels a little bit loose, but uh, I might have to fix that. But for the purpose of this video is over. So uh, I'll take this plate back off and double check, make sure it's tight or it doesn't need any support. So. If, it, if the box was too far on the wall, you can also use these caterpillars. I was telling you guys about these before. These are the caterpillars and how these work is basically they're, they're backing for the plug. So if, there's, if the box is too far on the wall, you can put these behind here on the, behind the box extension. So it creates a support if there's no support and these just fold over like this, kind of like a caterpillar. So kind of just fold there and then you just pick the desired length that you want and then you just tear it off. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. Just to say thank you for making this, taking the time out of my day to make the video for you guys. I appreciate it. God bless, have an awesome rest of your day. Um, make sure to subscribe if you're new or uh, if you like the videos and wanna check me out next week. Videos Monday through Friday. And uh, make sure to check out the description for uh, any social media links hope you guys check me out on instagram and i'll see you guys later have a great weekend might do a live stream saturday or sunday so make sure to hit the notification bell and i'll see you guys on the weekend or back on monday all right guys peace out god bless all right so if you guys stuck around and made it past the exit of the video then i'm gonna i took this back off and it was kind of loose it was kind of pushing in it didn't have the best back support so i took the caterpillars put them on the back side of the screw right here this one doesn't really need a box extension, but there's just no back support. I'm gonna re-screw re this down. And, uh, and then when you push on it, it's gonna be solid. Once I tighten the screw down, then it's gonna be rock solid. So hopefully that helps you guys understand that a little bit better. I'm gonna re-straighten this out, put the cover back on, re-straighten that out. So, all right guys, have a great weekend, see ya. All right guys, so I got this back and uh, rock solid now with the back support because after many years sometimes pushing on it all that much pushing on it so much it kind of bends it in the shape of a u like that this is a switch or whatever but just using this as an example so after using it for so many years it kind of bends it kind of bends it like this and then uh and then it becomes loose or whatever so uh you want make sure you want to have back support um if there's not any back support make sure you do it don't try to skimp out because then it'll be kind of faulty over the years or even pretty quickly if you go to put your plug tester in here when you go to check it or whatever so make sure it's solid and uh yeah so that's what she looks like and then if you're worried about like i know some people are brand new on the channel and wondering about electric electrical questions and stuff like that and they're wondering they're worried about doing things wrong but you go through afterwards and you put a plug tester on these you check all the outlets and if you wired it backwards or something, it'll tell you, and then you just take it apart and change it. But as long as you follow these steps, ground to the green screw, white to the silver screws, and uh, black wire to the gold screws, you'll be good. But uh, all these things get checked before the end of the project. So if you're worried about causing fires or explosions or anything, um, uh, it all gets checked and it's not that big of a deal. So hopefully this helps guys, and I'll catch you guys next time soon. See ya.